Okay, guys, uh, the last little segment of our uh, unit, this Chapter 4 unit, is on uh, relative motion. Uh, so let's... Uh, sorry about that. I have some issues with the recorder here. Uh, so uh, relative motion. Decided to go with the white background here. We'll see how that goes today. So um, this, I think, it, it, this will be a short video, I think, because I think this is at least the concept of relative motion is pretty straightforward. It can be a little bit tricky, a little hairy uh, in practice. Some of the problems can be tough, but um, in, in concept, it's pretty simple. So relative motion simply means that, um, or it relates to the idea that it, if an object's moving, you have to describe the way it's moving relative to or compared to something else. Now, of course, the thing that we frequently use as our reference point is the earth in our everyday life, right? So if you say a car drives down the road at 40 miles an hour, you're referencing the earth as your, your point of reference. But the earth is only one frame of reference, and one of the interesting things that you discover in physics is that no reference frame is, is quote unquote, the correct reference frame. There's no such thing as, as one valid reference frame. All reference frames are, are equally valid. So what you choose as your, your post, what your, your, your object of comparison is somewhat arbitrary. Um, and so uh, the way this would sometimes work out in problems, and, and, and by the way, this concept of relativity ends up being really important in a lot of areas in physics. But for right now, we're going to think about it relatively simply. Let's imagine a really simple case of relative motion in one dimension. So let's start with one dimension. This is quite simple. Uh, so for instance, maybe I have uh, an airplane that's flying. So here's this airplane. Uh, and let's say, here's the airplane. And let's say the airplane is moving uh, with a speed of, let's see if we can make that a little straighter. Let's say it's moving at a speed of, um, I don't know, let's just say 150 meters per second. Now, what do we mean when we say 150 meters per second? Relative to what? Well, frequently you might have heard the phrase airspeed. Airspeed means it's moving 150 meters per second relative to the air that is surrounding the plane. So I'm going to call this the velocity of the plane relative to the wind, relative to the air, right? So um, this is how fast it's moving relative to the air around it, but it doesn't necessarily tell us what the wind is doing. So maybe the wind is here blowing this way. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a wind that's going this way, right? what we call a headwind. So maybe the velocity of the wind is in this direction. So by the way, I should have given this a direction here. Let's say that this is east, so 150 meters per second east. So I'm, in terms of the picture, I'm thinking of north as being up, and so east is to the right here. So let's say the wind has a velocity that's obviously opposite east, which is west, at, um, let's say it's 30 meters per second and again west. And we could ask a very simple question, what would be the speed of the plane relative to the ground? In other words, what's the plane's ground speed? So wind speed, right, this is what I was calling wind speed, or air speed rather, I think is the way they term it, this is air speed which is the speed relative to the, the air itself. Um, but we're asking now for the ground speed, which would be the speed relative to the ground. So how would we think about this? Well, uh, it's, it's pretty simple. I, what I'm gonna say now is that the velocity of the plane relative to the ground, that's velocity plane relative to the ground is equal to the velocity of the plane relative to the wind plus the velocity of the wind relative to the ground. So when I said that this wind speed was 30 meters per second, this was relative to the ground, right? This is 30 meters per second relative to relative to the ground. 
okay? And so now it's a relatively straightforward calculation. So I'm gonna say the velocity of the plane relative to the ground is equal to the velocity of the plane relative to the wind. Let's call east the positive direction. So I'll call that, I'll call that positive 150 plus the velocity of the wind relative to the ground. Well, if east is positive, right, if I'm defining, if I'm, if I'm saying that this is the positive direction, then this is negative, the velocity of the wind relative to the ground is negative 30, right? So then what would the velocity of the plane be relative to the ground? Well, just 120 meters per second, positive meaning east. Now, you certainly could have figured this out without doing out the math, without being really careful about how you defined the, uh, the equation. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, right? You're gonna subtract them, they're opposite from one another. But this setup, thinking about it this way, is helpful because um, occasionally the problem's a little bit more complicated. So let's, let's think of a more complicated situation. What if we were now in two dimensions? Okay, so now it's a slightly trickier situation, not, not dramatically so, but let's imagine, I'll, I'll try to think of a, a slightly, slightly interesting problem. Let's imagine that um, we've got a plane and I'm gonna draw, I'll draw this, I'll, I'll say that this is the velocity, this vector here represents the velocity of the plane relative to the ground. So this is velocity of plane relative to ground. And I'm gonna say that this is due east, and let's say again, it's 150 meters per second. And this is due east, so again, I'm calling north up. So this is due east. So that's the velocity of the plane relative to the ground. But the velocity of the plane relative to the wind is actually down at an angle this way. Let's see if I can draw this. Oh, miserable. Slightly better. Um, so this is the velocity of the plane relative to the wind. And that is, let's call this angle 18 degrees. So this is 18 degrees south of east. And let's say that this value here is 130 meters per second. So first of all, before I even ask the question, let's see if we understand what the setup is or what's going on here. Well, the plane is flying 18 degrees south of east, but it's actually going due east at 150 meters per second. Well, how could that be? That's because the 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 wind is pushing the plane due east. So maybe the pilot says, oh, well, I need to go due east, but there's this wind coming up, right? This wind is pushing the plane north and east, and so I have to aim 18 degrees south of east in order to go due east. Um, so the question now that we could ask is, what's the velocity of the wind? What's the velocity of the wind? That's the question, right? And in terms of the picture, you should hopefully be able to see that it's just going to be this. This is going to be the velocity of the wind, V wind. So how do we determine that velocity, V wind? How do we determine that? Well, I can say, again, the velocity of the plane relative to the ground is equal to the velocity of the plane relative to the wind plus the velocity of the wind relative to the ground. Right? This is velocity of wind relative to ground right there in red. Same setup as we had before, but I'm going to be a little bit more careful because now I'm in two dimensions. So let's think about these two dimensions. I'm going to draw this vector in abstraction. I'm going to remove it from the picture and just draw it down here so that we can have a, a nice picture to work off of. Let's get a new color. Let's go with a, let's go with a green. So some of this wind velocity, V wind, is directed east, right? Some of it's pushing east, so this is the easterly component, and some of it's pointing north. This is the north component of this, so I've, I've redrawn this vector down here, right? This is V wind relative to ground. And I want to know what this is, so I've got to calculate these components. So how do I determine that? Well, let's start with, um, let's start with the northerly component. 
Well, the plane is flying due east relative to the ground, which means that this component, northerly component, must be equal to the southerly component of this vector. In other words, if I were to take a look at the southerly vector, the vector to the south here, the component of 130 that's acting to the south, that would be equal to the northerly component of the wind. And since this is an 18 degree angle right here, right, this is 18 degrees, then I can determine this value, right? This value right here is going to be 130 times the sine of 18 degrees. So I calculate that out and that I think ends up being 46.4. So that's the northerly component of my vector. And then how about the easterly component of my vector? Well, the easterly component of my vector has to be the difference between the easterly component of the plane relative to the wind, right, subtracted away from the actual uh, velocity of the plane relative to the ground. In other words, this thing here has to be 150 minus whatever this component is, which is going to be 130 cosine 18 degrees. And if you do that out, you should get 26.4. Again, these are in meters per second. Meters per second. So again, just to reiterate, the, uh, the northerly component has to equal the southerly component of this blue vector because it's not moving north or south. And then this term here is due to the fact that um, part of the wind is increasing the easterly velocity of the plane, the plane's airspeed, to get it up to 150. So I did 150 minus this vector right here. All right, so now I can find the velocity of the plane relative to, or the wind relative to the ground, by using the Pythagorean theorem. So uh, now I can go ahead and say the velocity of the wind relative to the ground is equal to the square root of uh, 46.4 squared plus 26.4 squared, and that gives me 53.4 meters per second. So that's the velocity, uh, or the speed rather. But I have to give an angle, right? So I want to know, I might want to know what this angle is, right? This angle is this angle right here. I wanna, might want to know what theta is right there, theta, to indicate the direction. And I could do that by using the arctangent function, right? I could say that theta is equal to the arctangent of 46.4 divided by 26.4. Um, and you do that out, and I think it ends up being about a 60 degree angle, 60.4 degrees. So this is 60.4 degrees. This is 60.4 degrees. And so in other words, I can say now the wind's velocity is 53.4 meters per second at an angle of 60.4 degrees, and how do I say this? North of east. And that's my final answer. Okay, so that's a brief introduction to the concept of relative motion. Um, I went through this rather quickly, but I think the concept is pretty straightforward. Um, even if sometimes it takes a little while to wrap your, your mind around the problem. We'll have an opportunity to do some practice on that later.